This is Lois DeWitt. This is the second part of two videos. The first video was my demonstration of making cornbread with the toaster oven cookbook that I wrote. So hopefully you've seen that video. After I had the cornbread made, if you remember, I set up a still light with the cornbread and then I took a picture of it. The cornbread is long gone, but I have my picture, my still life, and I'm ready to do a colored pencil drawing of it. So there's my photo, and there's the sketchbook I'm going to be using. The first thing I'm going to do is to divide this picture from here to here, and then I'm going to divide it. I'm going to divide it vertically and then divide it so horizontally. You can see the the vertical there that divides it vertically and the horizontal line there. Okay, so there's my photo there and I have duplicated that measurement, the edge and the vertical and horizontal lines there. This will help me split the photo up into sections so I'll be able to draw it more accurately. Erasing these lines. So I'm going to start with the upper left square, um, I can see that the angle of the table starts right about here. And it goes right to there. So that makes it really easy because I can just throw this line right across and actually into the next square like that. Now in this square, um, there's some drapery, and uh, you can see that the, the towel is, starts right almost near this line here, and then it goes up like that, and I'm just simplifying that angle of drapery. And then right about here, there's a little curve of it that's very close to the edge of the table, and then right here, which is about that far away, it ends. So you can see how easy it is to plot these forms. Again, um, the, the piece of cornbread, my famous cornbread, um, that, that actually, the edge of it starts right about here and ends on this line right about there. So I could just make that shape and that's if pretty I completed accurate. the square, um, got the shape of the, the basic shape of the cornbread in, that plate right there ends right about there on, on, on that square, right at that line. So everything in that square is pretty well located. Now I'm ready to go on to on this square. The, on the square, so I'm going to just draw that shape like that. And then I have the cup starting right, right about where the drapery ended. And that, um, that comes up to right about here on, on the square. So I know that the top of the cup is going to be ending right about there. And then I can just, I can kind of just throw an ellipse right there. Ends right there. So my ellipse is going to have to fit right in like that. And then I'll just do the sides of the cups. If you practice this, You'll find that this is this gets pretty easy to do, and this is a good way to learn how to really see, so that you once you learn how to to make everything flat and take it area by area, you can draw any. So um, the, this square here, um, there's some drapery here, and I can see that the corner of the towel ends just to the left of this square. So. If it starts up here and it ends there, I can pretty much just project that angle. And then I can put a little bit of the fold in right here. I know that the fold is right on that line. And then this other fold connects with this one and it goes out to right about there. So I can just draw that down, and then it continues down to here on the square, so I can just draw it down like that. 
and that's pretty that's pretty accurate. So now with the last square, the angle of the drapery, the, the towel, tea towel, I guess, um, is comes up like that from the bottom of the last square. I've al already kind of located the cup from the top square, and I know it goes down, the bottom of the cup goes down here, so I can project that on this line, the cup is going to end I think I'm going to have to make that cup just a speck wider. Yes. And when you, once you get the basic shapes down, what I'll do now is I'll go in, I'll tweak it a little bit. I'm going to go through the whole um, squares again just to make sure that they are accurate. Okay, so I, I checked my shapes and they look pretty good. Um, what I'm going to do now is, because this drawing is basically just a map that I'm going to be using for developing the colored pencil drawing, I'm going to get rid of a lot of lines because I don't want the pencil lines to interfere with the colored pencil lines. So what I'm going to do is make a lot of these lines very, very simple. I'm going to take an eraser and I'm going to erase all of my verticals and horizontals and a lot of the lines that I used in drawing. So I have my Prismacolor colored pencils here. Um, I just have a set of 12. You, they come in larger sets, but um, I, I find that I can get a lot of color from just 12 colored pencils. So what I'm going to do now, this is going to be easy actually because my drawing is already down. Background. Just lay in a color now. This is um, the background in the photo is sort of a pale greenish gray. Um, I don't have to do quite that color. I think I'm going to blend a couple colors together, maybe a brown and an orange. I put the brown in and I'm going go, just going to where there's shadow right in here. I'm adding a dark blue over the brown to make that shadow. And I think I'm also going to go into these areas here where there are shadows with the dark. I'm using blue for all the shaded areas and then I'm going to overlay them with different colors. But blue is going to be my shadow color. And for the table I'm going to start with an orange color. Orange goes right into the blue shadow. I'm adding yellow to the areas of the table that are very light. Some of the yellow will go into the cornbread. Add some green for the cloth, for the fabric here. So I'm putting that green right over the blue shadow, making a whole new color. And some of this green is going to go in the background here for shading as well, and probably over here, and maybe even a little bit in the cornbread. I'm starting to introduce the uh, orange and and yellow into the color of the table, and that these colors will also probably be interspersed in the background, in this uh, cornbread here, and maybe even in the green as I keep on working. But normally when you draw your grid lines, you have to 
uh, just draw them very, very lightly so that they don't come through like that because as you shade, you will see you'll get this little valley and indentation. See that orange can go right into the background. Maybe into the green a little bit just to give it a richer tone. Now I'm working in some turquoise into the, the cup the shading on the cup and also into the shadow to give it a nice rich color. And I will be also working the turquoise into the green for the same reason, just to make the green a, a richer green. Green and for the drapery. And now I'm going to go back into the shadows again and just slowly build up that shadow so it's nice and dark. And then what I may want to do is just, the green will act as a kind of a mid shade, so that if I were doing this in black and white, the blue would be like a black, and the green would be sort of a gray. Now here's an, another shading um, technique. Um, I now have black. Most of the shadows so far have been blue, but now I'm going to build that up. Um, where the blue shadows are, I'm going to put in black very lightly. The black overlay will make the blue look like a dark blue. And that's how you can get a lot of different colors out of colored pencils, even if you only have 12 by just overlaying them like that. What I have to do is to, what I want to do is to bring in more shadow here now, uh, which is just a, you know, with a black and, and blue colored pencils to emphasize the lighting here and darken the background a little bit more. And then I want to, I want to tweak some of my edges, just make them a little harder and bring in a, a little darker tonality. I'm just going to start. This is a blue pencil and I'm just going to start darkening these areas a little bit more. And I'll just keep on increasing the shading but I want to have a nice kind of uniform look so I'm just doing it very very lightly. And then I'm going to do this and this as well. I have to say that it took a lot longer than it did to bake the cornbread and eat the cornbread. But I figure there are three different rewards here. Baking, eating, and drawing. <laughs> so here's the original photo. And I've made some changes and was quite inspired by this to uh, put some different colors in and make the lighting just a little bit different. And you can see how the colors are intermixed so that even if you have 12 colors um, in a colored pencil package that you can get a lot of different colors by just keeping on overlaying them. So give this a try. This is a, a, a wonderful way of drawing and, um, and I think you should try it.